Hey there YouTube lovers, my name is BB8 and today we are going to review Persona 5 Royal. I've wanted to review this game for a long time, but I've had too many games on the table, so I didn't get around to beating it. But I bought a physical copy of Persona 5 Royal on Nintendo Switch in February because Persona 5 was one of my most requested Switch ports between 2019 and 2022. Still, we ended up getting Persona 5 Royal on Nintendo Switch, but not vanilla Persona 5. I played it non-stop for a month and have now formed a complete opinion on Persona 5 Royal. And I have to say now, I have a lot I want to talk about here. I may not be able to form an opinion on vanilla Persona 5, because a lot of people have been telling me that there's no point in playing vanilla Persona 5 in 2024, because Royal is the superior version of Persona 5. And I did see it listed on the PlayStation Plus collection two years ago. I purchased Royal on PS4 for about £15. But I ended up going with Royal over Vanilla Persona 5. And I will explain the reason I bought the Nintendo Switch version later in the video. But now, without further ado, let's get into the review, shall we? For the gameplay, if you ignore the Royal subtitle, Persona 5 is a Japanese role-playing game, or JRPG for short, video game where players take control of a male high school student under probation upstairs to Café LeBlanc, which is run by Sojiro Sakura. You can call him whatever you want in the game, but I'm going to refer him by his Phantom Thieves codename, Joker. The game does have elements of social simulation games like The Sims and Animal Crossing, such as the time of day and the weather affecting the behaviour of the game's environment, such as mementos being affected on days where there's pollen, and unlike Animal Crossing, Persona 5 is not synced with real time. Through the time that Joker attends Shujin Academy, scripted or random events can occur. Scripted events are a part of the game's story, such as Kamo Shida in the first act, or a confidant rank up event, such as when you increase your confidant rank with someone in your party, or any other confidant in the game, such as Kasumi Yoshizawa. Random events will occur by doing activities throughout Tokyo, such as spending time with your confidants. The confidant ranking system can also unlock new features, not just in the metaverse, but in the real world as well. For example, Munehisa Iwai runs the untouchable shop in Shibuya, which sells weaponry. You can start a confidant with him when you reach God's level 4 and you can unlock the ability to customize your ranged weapons which will add more options when a wise rank 7 confidant is reached. And besides normal school life, Persona 5 features dungeon crawling gameplay, which comes in two different types, palaces and mementos. Palaces are a part of the story, which each villain character in the game having their own palace with their heart that is themed after the character and what they see the particular place as. For example, Kamoshida, a gym coach at Shujin Academy, sees Shujin Academy as his castle. Students of Shujin, I can't say how he treats them because you know what YouTube's going to do if I say it. And diving into a sensitive topic like that is not what I'm going to do here. But if you want to know what I'm on about, you might want to have to play the game yourself. Because I don't think I can talk about it here. And Mementos is 
a randomly generated dungeon like Stardew Valley. Where the Phantom Thieves can complete requests they receive from different citizens throughout playing the game. Joker can gain different types of personas by defeating shadows within palaces and mementos, which can be combined or fused within the Velvet Room, which is a frequently occurring location within the game's story. The Velvet Room does unlock more features as you rank up your confidant with Igor as well as the twins Caroline and Justine, who are residents of the Velvet Room. The JRPG structure in Persona 5 is complex, and with a combination of turn-based RPGs, social simulators and dungeon crawlers, I think the overall core gameplay of Persona 5 is quite detailed. For the story, I don't have time to cover the entire story because the game is 100 hours long, but I will only cover what is relevant as well as the characters. Most of the story up until Sinejim is arc, if you didn't get the bad ending, is told through flashbacks while Sinejima is having a talk with Joker in the interrogation room. The main character Joker is put on probation for one year after being framed for assault. He goes to stay in Tokyo with Sojiro Sakura, a family friend who runs Café LeBlanc and has to attend Shujin Academy during the one year he has on probation. After arriving, he is gathered to the Velvet Room in his sleep, where he meets Igor, who gives a warning that he is required to go through rehabilitation to avoid future ruin and grants him with an unusual app on his mobile phone, which allows him to access the metaverse which then leads him to start the Phantom Thieves group with Morgana, who is a cat-like creature born from the Velvet Room, and Ryuji, who is labelled as the school troublemaker after assaulting Kanoshida. On to Kamaki, who is a fashion model and student, which Kamoshida has done a no-no to, and then joins the team to help with Kamoshida. Throughout the course of the story, more members join the Phantom Thieves with each story arc giving them a bit of background. The Phantom Thieves, apart from the ones I mentioned, consist of Yusuke Kitagawa, an art student who joins once he finds out the true colours of his art teacher, Madarame. I thought Yusuke was an unlikable character when he first entered the scene, because of his attitude and behaviour towards Arn, and to be honest, he became more likeable after joining the Phantom Thieves. I felt the same way towards Makoto Nijima, sister of Sai Nijima, the president of Shujin Academy Student Council, who acted as a spy towards the Phantom Thieves until she requested them to take down a Mafia boss, or Kanashiro, but unlike these two characters, there's one other character like them I want to talk about, but because of one plot twist, I'll talk about him last. Futaba Sakura, a hacker and adopted daughter of Sojiro Sakura, who isolated herself in her room after a conspiracy theory surrounding her biological mother's death, put Futaba to blame through an Irreversible thing, note. Unfortunately, I can't actually say what irreversible thing means because you know what YouTube's gonna be like if I say it. Haru Okumura, the daughter of the CEO of Big Bang Burger, attempts to control her life and mistreat his employees. Now, this character is sort of like Yusuke and Makoto. But with a catch. Since he joins the Phantom Thieves just to sell them out to the police, and that is 
Goro Akechi. A detective who works for Shido. And he is that type of character that went from unlikable to likable to unlikable again. Because he attempted to kill Joker. If you don't snitch on your teammates, that is. Which Akechi falsely informs the media that Joker did the irreversible thing in the interrogation room. But the other members of the Phantom Thieves pulled a clever trick on him, despite Akechi being unlikable towards the end of the story. He's a well-written character, not just in his qualities, but is also a well-written twist villain. Although I don't have time to talk about the ending, Persona 5 Royal has masterclass storytelling, with creative twists, great world building, as well as memorable and well-written characters with each having their own qualities. The story is also creatively written depending on the path you go through, as well such as how the game's writing handles the various endings within the story. For the changes from Vanilla Persona 5, I didn't play Vanilla Persona 5 prior to playing Persona 5 Royal, but I'm going to put this section here anyway because I know this information through research, and that is the changes made to the Royal version of the game. The Royal re-release introduces new locations around Tokyo you can visit, which includes a new minigame called Darts, which allows players to invite other Phantom Thieves to play Darts to increase an individual member's Baton Pass rank. This is useful because increasing Baton Pass ranks can increase damage as well as recover HP and SP. A confident for a catchy is added in, which I think doesn't make sense because of the story, since a catchy did turn out to be a twist villain in the end. The showtime moves, which do remind me a lot of the triple moves from the Super Mario RPG remake, which are fun cutscenes to watch, which more moves will be added in as you progress through the story. These act in a similar way to all our attacks, but are different. The Thieves Den, which acts as a digital art book, can allow users to view art, listen to their favourite music from the game, place models of personas in different locations they encounter throughout the game, and watch cutscenes. The Royal re-release does add one extra character. Kasumi Yoshizawa, or Violet, as her codename ends up being. She transfers to Shujin Academy, just like Joker, and is limited to only 5 ranks, unlike every other character in the game. But a useful part of hanging out with her is it will raise Joker's maximum HP. Kasumi does join the Phantom Thieves, in the third semester, but I didn't get to experience it because of my in-game decisions. I probably will run through the game in New Game Plus later in the year, so I can experience the third semester ending, but it will be a while until I get to experience it because Persona 3 Reload is in the line for me to play at the moment. For the Nintendo Switch version, the only reason I purchased Persona 5 Royal on Nintendo Switch was mainly because Persona 5 was my most wanted third party port for Nintendo Switch. It made sense since Joker's inclusion on the Smash roster made me want to play Persona 5 to see what his origin game was like. We didn't get Persona 5 Royal on Nintendo Switch until three years after Joker got into Smash Bros, which was a weird time to drop it. 
but at least we finally got it to release on Nintendo Switch, and I have got to say, it was worth the multi-year wait. I was interested in talking about the Nintendo Switch version in my review, because the Nintendo Switch hasn't had the best reputation in terms of third-party ports, but the port of Hogwarts Legacy was actually decent on the Switch. But how's Persona 5 Royal on Switch? Well, you're about to find out. Despite the Nintendo Switch hardware being limited, Persona 5 Royal does run well on Nintendo Switch. Identically to the PS4 version, but the visuals aren't quite there compared to other platforms. But the game looks really good on Nintendo Switch OLED, especially in areas where red appears on the screen. The Nintendo Switch port of Persona 5 Royal is almost perfect, apart from one flaw. Any form of animated texture on the safe room doors or the enemies within the game would appear to be at a very low frame rate, unlike the PS4 version, which isn't a huge deal, but I do think Persona 5 Royal will get one more re-release on Nintendo's next console to address that issue. Because I do think Persona is one game a lot of people are going to end up playing on Nintendo's next console. But is the Nintendo Switch version of Persona 5 Royal worth it? Honestly, yes. The Nintendo Switch is my go-to platform for JRPGs, and Persona 5 Royal fits perfectly into that category. Despite the one minor issue I just talked about, I saw it on Nintendo Switch for £25 on Amazon, and despite it being $54.99 on the eShop, it was definitely worth the price. For the summary, the gameplay, I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. The gameplay acts as a unique blend of social sims, JRPGs, and dungeon crawling which stays true to Persona's overall identity with a fresh take. For the graphics and the performance, I'm going to give it a 9.5 out of 10. I do think the visuals in Persona 5 Royal are pretty good. It might not be Horizon level graphics, but with an anime art style, it does look pretty good. And the performance in Persona 5 Royal is quite smooth even on the Switch version, and, and the loading times aren't actually that bad. The UI design, I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. The UI design is not boring. It experiments with its own stylistic UI, and that's what I like about Persona 5 Royal. It has a peak menu design. And for the HUD, I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10 this also does apply to the HUD as well, because I really like the attention to detail they put into it. The story, I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. The storytelling in Persona 5 Royal is masterclass, especially since it does feel more like something Pixar would do, minus the dark themes, since the story does remind me a bit of Inside Out and Soul, which both came from Pixar. For the characters, I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. The characters in Persona 5 Royal are well written, with each member of the Phantom Thieves getting their own arc and development throughout the story. Even if Goro Akechi did a few things towards the end of the story that made him an un unlikable character, I still think he's a well written character. And for the content, I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. Persona 5 Royal does not have a shortage of things to do. When you are not focusing on the story, it has loads of mini-games to take part in, and the addition of the Thieves' Den in the Royal version acts as a digital art book for both Persona 5 and the Royal re-release. For the music, I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. The soundtrack in Persona 5 Royal is so memorable. I can't stop singing some of the songs from the game in my head, 
Additions like Last Surprise, Beneath the Mask, Life Will Change, and Rivers in the Desert are the ones that stand out to me the most. For the PlayStation 4 version, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. I barely had any issues running the PS4 version of Persona 5 on my PS5. The Nintendo Switch version, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. The Nintendo Switch version of the game is almost perfect, apart from animated textures appearing at a low frame rate. For the difficulty, I'm going to give it a very hard. I almost gave this game a nightmare difficulty because Okumura was probably the hardest boss out of all of them. I'm not gonna lie, the palace bosses are very well designed. It's just the difficulty that can make the bosses frustrating. And for the length, I'm going to give it 100 plus hours. Persona 5 Royal is now the longest game I've played story-wise, beating Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which was a 100 hour run for me. If anime or JRPGs are not for you, Persona 5 Royal may not be your game. Since the cutscenes in it are long, but I barely skipped any of them. The only time I've ever skipped cutscenes is if I had to go back to the previous morning before infiltrating a palace just to get SP recovering items I need to finish a battle. For the audience, I'm going to give it a 16 to 18 plus. Persona 5 Royal is not a game aimed towards children due to the dark themes expressed within the game. I recommend waiting until you are at least 16 before playing this game. Then you will understand the rights and wrongs. For the warning, I'm going to give it shelf bomb, as I'm calling it, drug use, violence, and strong language. Like I said, player discretion is advised when playing a game like Persona 5 Royal, since it does feature themes that are sensitive to some players. And for the perk, I'm going to give it its well-deserved certified gold perk. Or should I say certified red, just for the Phantom Thieves. I've never seen it coming, but the Phantom Thieves have infiltrated their way into the Certified Gold Club as the 17th game to ever be a part of it. Its engaging gameplay and masterclass storytelling makes me want to come back to the game for more. And I think Persona 5 Royal deserves its place in the Certified Gold Club. And overall, I give Persona 5 Royal a 10 out of 10. I've waited a long time to play Persona 5 Royal, and when I recently got around to grinding the game non-stop for a month, I can say I am satisfied with my experience of the game, because it makes me want to explore the rest of the Persona franchise, which I am going to do with Persona 3 Reload and Persona 4 Golden later in the year, but overall, it's now my favorite JRPG of all time after playing the game. So guys, what did you think of my review for Persona 5 Royal? So, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and you turn your notification bell on, so you don't miss another video like this one. And I will see you all in a future video. BB-8 out.